Hello everyone, this is Sephard Short 57 and welcome back to another video. Now, I am currently working on a bigger video that is gonna be released later. So I thought in the meantime, I would have a little story time with your swordlets talking about my past. Now, I debated whether I wanted to talk about this or not because what I'm about to say is part of my black history. It is something that I am a bit ashamed of, but I think it's good information for you swordlings. As I'm sure most of you know, I am a highly trained and skillful martial artist. I have been practicing martial arts for the last 20 years and I've trained under a lot of different schools and disciplines. So I know what I'm talking about when it comes to this topic. But even before I started studying martial arts, I was still a naturally born, skillful fighter. I subconsciously already knew a lot of the techniques used in martial arts such as Karate, Judo, Aikido and so on. I had also started reading a lot of martial art manga since I discovered Japanese culture the year before. So I learned a lot from those as well. Now, back in those times, I was always carrying my trusty Boken with me at all times. To protect myself, since I didn't actually know any martial arts, and any kind of weapon with me would be very advantageous. If I ever got into a fight, and one day when I was walking down the street, I noticed a karate dojo to my right, and I saw a bunch of people practicing the moves through the window. Now, keep in mind, I was a teenager at the time, so I did a lot of mistakes during that era. It is something all of us humans go through at one point. A lot of us do mistakes early on in our lives that we learn from and they are very important and this was one of those moments. Of course I don't do any mistakes like that anymore since I'm a grown adult and have learned everything that is important. I wasn't part of the dojo but I decided to enter because I wanted to fight against some strong opponents but I didn't get any kind of challenge. You see, back then I didn't understand the usefulness of kumite and how much you can learn from it. I treated every encounter as a fight to the death. So I used every kind of arsenal that I had. Back then all of my moves consisted of atomy, strikes to the body. I had no experience with throws, strangleholds, or similar, since I hadn't started practicing judo yet. So I used every technique that I knew, and after defeating three opponents, I was kicked out of the dojo by a very angry sensei there. What I actually did was something very disrespectful. Since I treated these kumite, or sparring sessions, like real fights, I used a lot of moves that wouldn't be ethical. Atomy against the solar plexus, to the temple, under the nose, in the eyes, genitals, and under the chin and on the throat are considered dangerous moves and could kill someone. Like I said before, I was a teenager at the time, so I didn't really understand how disrespectful it was to use these atomy strikes since they were doing kumite, where you don't actually hurt the opponent. Using objects around you is also part of martial arts, which is why I also used my boken in some situations. And because of that, as I slowly walked out of the dojo, I could hear the other karatekas behind me whispering the word, Kensei, which became my nickname from then on. At the time, I looked down on all the people in the dojo, considering them weak and pathetic. Which is true in some aspects, but I will get to that a bit later. 
so I decided to visit more dojos to test my strength, even visiting judo dojos and jujitsu dojos. And the same thing happened at those dojos, and words began to spread about the Kensei visiting dojo with his boken and beating up a bunch of practitioners of martial arts. Because of this I wasn't allowed inside a lot of different dojos, so instead I decided to apply to one of them to start practicing there, since that was the only way for me to fight other opponents. But unfortunately that did not go through the way I wanted it to. Because the Swedish Karate Association had actually caught wind of my actions, and once they saw my application letter, they refused me and banned me from ever entering any dojo in Sweden. At the time I was very angry, but it only took a few years for me to understand that what I did wasn't a very good thing. Now, I really disrespected the concept of kumite, because I didn't understand that it was just for practicing and learning new techniques. But I know better now. But there is something I still agree with my 15 year old self from back then. And that is that Western martial art dojos and Western martial art competitions are completely useless, disrespectful and should be reworked from the ground up. Kumite is very important when practicing in the dojo, but a real martial art competition should not use the concept of Kumite. How in the world can a martial artist show their skills when there are restrictions and rules? Martial art competitions have also infected the East. Even during the Olympics, the Japanese were forced to use Western rules for Karate. And don't get me started how dojos are in the West. Dojos in the West are just glorified daycares where a bunch of babies and children run around and aren't taught proper martial arts. And that is because the West like to treat underage children like babies. Children won't learn anything in martial arts if you just show them that everything is a cakewalk. Every time I enter a dojo here in the West, I hang my head in shame. Because it's so pathetic and it's also very disrespectful to the Japanese. So I totally understand why Japanese people look down on Westerners. There is a good reason for it. Now that is all I have to share with you swordlings here today. I'm sure this story time with me have been very entertaining and insightful for you. But anyway, look forward to the next video coming out, which will be in a little bit. But until then, have a good night, evening, morning or day. Sayonara!